I might need to take further steps in relieving my back and shoulder and neck pain. I think that is going to mean having a breast reduction. What I'm gonna look like and what my body's gonna look like and what my body's gonna have to go through. I wanted to get on here and tell you that I was released from pelvic floor physical therapy yesterday and it should be really exciting and in part it is and in part it, it's not. I hate to be a downer. Pelvic floor physical therapy changed my life. I mean completely changed my everyday life. The things that I do, the, the way that I pick up my kids, my abilities as a mom. But it's also shown me that I might need to take further steps in relieving my back and shoulder and neck pain. And I think that is going to mean having a breast reduction. And it seems like it's going to be a really hard decision, but one that could, it could eradicate my chronic back pain, my chronic neck pain. It's just a lot to think about. Tomorrow I am going to call a plastic surgeon's office and try to schedule a consult. I'm nervous about it. I'm nervous because, because I'm a woman and I've had children and I know how much my body has changed and I want to be confident and love myself, but I, I have insecurities. And to go to someone's office where they're gonna mark all over my breasts about where to change them almost feels like it validates it feels like it almost validates some negative image of them or idea of them my body has done amazing things it has carried four beautiful children it grew two babies at one time. It fed four babies. It fed three babies at once. <laughs> and I'm grateful for what my body has done. I'm proud of what my body has done. I just would like to be in a little less pain every day. I'm worried about what I'm gonna tell my kids one day. I wonder what my girls are gonna think. I'm nervous about what my family's gonna think. Surgery has been something I have been fighting tooth and nail every time I was pregnant to avoid. And here I am wanting to jump into a surgery on my own accord. I feel a little bit like a hypocrite. But I know that this is going to help my body. Not just now, but it will help me in the future with prevention of spinal problems. I want this to be empowering. I'm worried that when people find out that they're going to think that that I'm so self-conscious and that I don't appreciate the way that God made me, but you can't imagine how much it hurts. My heart hurts that this seems to be the step to take. I'm just on a path of healing. I want to feel more empowered about this. I want to be excited. I want to be excited about the prospect of a pain-free life. Hi everyone, so today is August 13th and I'm going to start calling plastic surgeons in my area to get information about breast reduction. How can I help you? Yes ma'am, um, I was interested in uh, seeing someone for a consultation to see about a breast reduction? Um, yes, ma'am. Are you looking to have it covered by your insurance or out of pocket, out of pocket like cosmetic surgery? Um, insurance. You're in good hands with an ego doctor. Okay. Um, that is for sure. But I'm late. I, this is like my, my first step of trying to figure any of this out. Um, okay. That's the 17th. Monday the 17th. Okay. 
All right, Chelsea, you're all set. We've got you scheduled for Monday, August 17th at 2.30. Is there, um, I'm, I'm really nervous about coming and doing it. Is there anything that I need to, I don't know, be aware of or expect? Up for a little bit, and then he'll leave and give you an opportunity to change out of your clothes and into a gown. Okay. We will take pictures of you. We have a designated photo area to take pictures because for insurance, they'll require pictures and some other things. And um, you'll come back to your room, and he'll examine you and talk to you about what size you are now versus what size you hope to be after your reduction. He'll talk to you a little bit about the procedure, a little bit about your recovery. Okay. And then after that, after the consultation, you'll get pressed. You'll go and see our surgery coordinator and um, kind of have in the back of your mind maybe on your calendar what dates may work for you. I know it will take a little bit of time because we'll have to send all of your information to Blue Cross Blue Shield and actually get approval. Yes, ma'am. But she can give you an idea um, once you have a chance to look at your insurance and tell you what you're out of pocket costs are going to be based on your deductible and your copay. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And then you'll have a chance, like I said, you'll be able to see the nurses, you'll see um, the doctor, you'll see Jackie, your surgery coordinator, you'll kind of see the dynamics of our office as well. Okay. It's an easy process, there's no pressure, um, it's a very comfortable setting. I ask all the questions you want to, you know, if you think you're going to be nervous, maybe make your list of questions now. Yes, ma'am. you've got them written down, and then you can take them with you. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Um, but no need to be nervous. Okay. Okay. I'm, I'm nervous about, you know, taking my shirt off and having someone <laughs> tell me what they'll do are, to me. Yeah, <laughs> you know, anytime you get to point out any of your flaws. Right. Hard, yes, ma'am. You feel vulnerable. Yes, ma'am. And so... Um, Yes, we are accustomed to it, and um, honestly, it's not to make this sound like um, it is not important, but it is just the, the work we do here, and yes. it's just like being at work. Yes, ma'am. If that makes you feel any better, it, yes. it's the work that we do, and yes. it's, it's your body. It is not anything. You're going to be self-conscious, but no one here is. Okay. Okay. Um, we just encourage you to be comfortable and ask any kind of questions that you want to ask. The nurse is in there with the doctor. Um, she'll be taking notes as he's talking to you okay. um, so that it can go in your chart. Okay. Okay. Well, you've been wonderful. Thank you so much. <laughs> well, you're welcome. You're welcome. This is exciting. This is yeah. going to give you a new lease on life. All of yeah. our residents and patients are so happy and wish they would have had the procedure, yes. you know, of course. Yeah. Before that, they actually had it done. But, yes, I think that's um, why I, I I'm think emotional. You're really like the practice. I think you're really gonna like yeah. the beers. Okay, great. Thank you so much. And I guess I'll okay. see y'all on Monday. Right. <laughs> Thanks, Chelsea. All right. Bye bye. I just don't understand why I'm having to make this choice. I don't understand why my body is built like this. I don't understand why I can work so hard to try to be better and not be in pain. And it comes down to this. Saying why does it matter if I lose weight or if I go to the chiropractor or I don't hear me. I don't. I just. I wish this wasn't gonna be the answer. I know it's gonna change so much for me. I just wish. I wish it didn't have to be like this. I do not want to go and take my shirt off in front of somebody and have them point out all of the flaws.
Okay, so I'm going to go in for my first breast reduction consultation. I've been really tired today, so I haven't put too much thought into the appointment and what's going to happen and any of that kind of stuff. I am getting a little nervous. I have looked on their website and looked at, you know, before and after pictures and I'm just not feeling confident that this is going to be the right doctor. I was referred over here by somebody that I know and they said that the people in the office are wonderful and that that's really important and that's probably true because what would I know about any of this? But I would also like it to look nice. so. I know it's just the first appointment and I can make an appointment with as many doctors as I want. I'm just, I'm not feeling confident and I'm not, I'm not feeling comfortable, but I'm just going to go and do it and see what happens and there's no strings attached. And if I find out that it's not, not, the surgery isn't good for me to do or isn't the right decision, then at least then I'll know. No matter what, this is going to be going to be good, I'm sure. Well, I just finished up at the doctor's with my consultation. I think it went well. My doctor was very nice, and the staff was great. They were so friendly. One of my concerns was to have um, pooching on the side, and he believed that with the shape of everything and that I didn't, my side and towards the back is fairly lean, that I most likely won't have that, but that usually if there's something like that, um, people, I can't go through the insurance, but will opt to have the scar come all the way further or to have it liposuctioned right there, but he really felt like I was a good candidate to not have that on the side. He did say that I would have an anchor incision. For the insurance to pay for it, you have to take 5,000 grams, I believe. I really should have paid more attention in that. But he said that that would put me in the range that I would like to be in. I would like to be a C, but a D is fine too. I would not like to go smaller than a C. And he thought that that was excellent and that he could definitely get me where I would like to be. He said that he thought if I had them done that it would give my breasts a more full look that I used to have before I had um, so many kids. So he didn't really talk about having an implant. I don't think he felt like I would need to have one and I wasn't wanting to have one. So that sounds great. The insurance website was down today so they weren't able to take a look at that but she said that when the website's up that they can send it online then it will be faster and we would know quicker and that she might know something by Wednesday today's and Monday and that if we can do it online then I will not need any more referral other than the doctor which the insurance company said that they wouldn't need anyone except the doctor, but um, my physical therapist also offered to write me a recommendation if that would help. So they said that they would take down um, my nipple size a little bit just so that it was proportioned to the breast. He said that it was a fairly simple procedure and that I haven't had a history of anything that would cause him to think anything would go wrong, but the biggest risk would be nipple, areola, something oh, that's awful that I can't remember that but he said it's basically when the nipple begins to die off but that it's extremely rare so that's about it I don't know how I feel it feels sudden for me to be just wanting to jump right in and see about this and that wasn't my intention I just wanted to go and have a consultation and, and see what my options are and what would happen he said no heavy lifting for four weeks which seems like it could be hard. It seems like I would be putting a lot of pressure on my husband to take care of more. And that makes me feel bad. I really don't like that it feels like there's no other options. I guess now I just need to think and pray about it and I will hear back about if the insurance thinks that I'm a good candidate and I will 
make the best decision that I can. I was um, interested in scheduling a consultation for breast reduction surgery. Okay, are you trying to go through insurance? Yes, I've already been approved um, through another doctor's office. Okay, so I just wanted you to know our next available for insurance breast reduction is not until... Let me see. Okay, so it's not until October of 2021 for the consultation. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, I guess that I will just, I don't know. I don't know what to say. I guess I'll get off the phone. <laughs> um, sorry. It's okay. I know it's so far out, but... Yeah. Okay, thanks. All right, you're welcome. Over a year. Over a year's wait. I mean, the photos online were good. I can see why. That's crazy. So it's about two months until my scheduled surgery. I actually called yesterday to change my pre-op appointment um, because we are going out of town on the days that that it was scheduled for. Um, so I got that moved up a week early. But I am having such excruciating back pain. Last night I tried to lay on like a lacrosse ball on, so it's like the muscles that run on either side like parallel to your spine is what hurts so bad I think. Or at least they're, they're really tight. Like they are, like it feels like a thick rope back there, like that you can't push. And so I try to lay on the lacrosse balls and not even move, just like put them back there and lay. And it was, it was just bringing me to tears. It hurts so bad. And then when I would take them off, I would, there would be relief. And that was what was pushing me to do that. But, just hurt so bad like during the night the weight of them just either if I'm on my back it just sinks down on me and it makes it hard to breathe or if I'm laying on my side it just like pulls all of the muscles in my back I just can't seem to get any relief right now it's making me feel like the surgery is the right thing to do last week I asked my surgeon for some photos because I wasn't sure if the photos on the surgical um, practice website were his or not and he sent me some that were very fresh like had to have been the first couple of days after having it done and it really messed with my head like one of them was a breast reduction and a tummy tuck and it was just so graphic it wasn't really the kind of photos that I was looking for I was looking for more of like when they had um, healed so that has, I mean, I obviously I'm not having a tummy tuck, so it's not the same thing, but it was very graphic. It's really messed with my head about what I'm going to look like and what my body's going to look like and what my body's going to have to go through. And that, that is scary. It's scary to me. The pain is so bad. I don't know what else to do. I'm uh, blogging today. Ah, you're blogging today? Yeah. You're experiencing it? Are you recording all the stuff that's going on? Um, I'm going to record that in a little while. I guess I'm doing two vlogs today. One for the appointment and one for just my day. So you're thinking about putting the rest reduction on YouTube? I'm thinking about it. I've, I've videoed a lot of stuff about it. Yeah, I didn't know. I thought it'd be a good subject. It doesn't seem like maybe there's not enough videos out there about yeah. if women want to or not. 
Yeah, there doesn't seem to be a whole lot of videos that I can find that are people with my body type in for the reasons that I'm doing it. Right. Well, that would be a unique video. Yeah. Hi, everybody. Um, today is my pre-op appointment for my breast reduction. I'm about two weeks out from the surgery. I probably haven't filmed anything about this for a month or two, maybe a month and a half. But today I'm going in to talk to the doctors about what to expect and probably get my surgical bra, I would think, and basically get a whole lot of information. I have had a lot of emotion since the last time I videoed. I think that I am settling in with the fact that my body is going to look different and that it might not look as good as I feel like I look now. That seems crazy. I know a lot of people get a breast reduction um, thinking that it's going to improve the way their breasts look, but I think I've mentioned before that my, my breasts are really symmetrical and I believe they're nice looking <laughs> and I've, that's been a concern of mine and um, like an emotional mental struggle to accept that for me, I think they are not going to look as good as they do now, but it is for improving my life and to not have as much back pain as I do now. And I'm starting to be okay with that fact. And I'm even starting to be a little bit excited thinking about what my life is going to be like and having less back pain. I've been having a lot of back pain the last couple of weeks and I can't seem to get any type of relief so like this is all coming at a good time I'm starting to get a little more excited about what I'm gonna look like in clothing and I was just telling Austin last night about the way I think that my mental health is gonna improve just being able to go to a store I mean every time I go shopping it is it's depressing. It makes me really sad and heartbroken that I can't find clothes that look nice on me and fit me well. And I'm excited about thinking that, that that's going to be different in like a month. <laughs> that it probably won't be a problem ever again. And that's really exciting. So... That's where I'm at before this appointment. I am nervous about having surgery. I'm nervous about the downtime and about getting depressed afterwards because my life's pretty on the go and I like it that way. And so having to, you know, be down for a week or two and not being able to pick things up for like a month and a half is, is going to be hard and it's just a fact that I have to accept but it's not going to be forever. So that's where I'm at emotionally and mentally. And I think I'm in a good place for doing this. I'm really glad that I didn't just jump right into it. I'm glad that I waited a couple of months, scheduled it a couple of months out so that I could mentally prepare myself. And I think had I had done it way back when I could have gotten an appointment to do it, it, it would not have been healthy for me mentally to be going through all of these emotions afterward and be also dealing with the emotions of what my body, you know, my new body is going to look like. So I'm glad, I'm glad that I waited and have kind of worked through these emotions beforehand. So I'm excited for my appointment and I guess I will let you know how it goes. Well, that was, once again, very frustrating. I don't know why it is so difficult for this doctor's office to communicate with my insurance provider. Every time I have, oh, wrong way. Every time I have spoken to the insurance provider, every time I've spoken to the doctor's office, and back and forth they have given me a different 
amount every time. Today, I was supposed to go in and it was supposed to cost 400 with my insurance. That's how much my out-of-pocket was because I've met my deductible for the year with all the other things that I've been doing for my back this year. And I go in today and they give me my packet and it is saying that my amount that's gonna be due is 1,200 and some odd dollars. So that is very disappointing that now I'm gonna have to call the insurance people again and sort it out because 1200 is a lot different than 400 and the office insurance lady she has just not been that helpful um it's just very disappointing and she was just like, oh, well, that's just, you know, what they said this morning and yada, yada. And I was like, okay, but I've talked to you. I've talked to her three times about this. Every time it's been some different sob story about why they can't get it right. So it's just extremely frustrating. And now I'm going to have to call the insurance again, then call their um, office again. And she's going to have to speak to the insurance and I'm certain it's an easy fix. It's just not peaceful to deal with. It's not how I thought the appointment was gonna go. Overall, the appointment just in general didn't go the way I thought. There wasn't much information given. I didn't get a surgical bra. Um, there's been some information that just doesn't line up with other people that I've heard of having breast reduction. They don't think I'll need a surgical bra. I won't have drains put in, most likely. And they're saying that I'll just use like a um, really loose sports bra. And most of the things that I've heard of, people are having to have tight compression type stuff. So that's different. Um, they gave me medications that I need to go have filled so, not quite how I thought the appointment was going to go at all. I did go and have my blood work done. Um, they did a hemoglobin and a hec hectic? That's not correct, but something like that. So, now I guess I'm going to sit in the parking lot, call the insurance, and try to get that sorted out. Because they were telling me like, oh, then I could just pay by check or credit card or whatever. And I made it very clear to them at the beginning that I would need to know how much this was going to cost to see if it was even feasible for my family. So this is very disappointing. Like I cannot express to you how disappointing this is. I'm, I'm very disappointed with the office not not the nurses or like the front desk people but just this one the billing lady my experience with her is very disappointing can't stress that enough it's just stressful it's added stress to something that's already a little stressful a lot stressful so i will keep you updated on that Okay, now the doctor's office has called while I was video that. So let's see what they have to say. Hi, Kelsey. I just wanted to let you know I did talk to Blue Cross Blue Shield again, and they did tell me that the $200 facility fee is what you owe. So I apologize. Um, I did get someone different last time, and maybe they um, are new or just made a mistake. We all make mistakes. So I um, apologize for that inconvenience but they did confirm that it was $200 facility fee. Alrighty, thank you very much. Bye-bye. Okay, so, well, that's good news. I knew there was no possible way that it could have been more than that. So that's good. So now I just need to return her call and confirm because it's really, I think it's supposed to be $400. It's the copay, $200 for facility, $200 for physician. So I need to once again get her to confirm what the dollar amount is but 
at least she called and did get it figured out because the last time I had questions about it, she told me she would put me on a list to check it out that she calls once a week. So I guess I'll call her back and, and figure that out. 